So this is the final video this week and here I'm just going to do a few examples which will help you with the practice sheet looking at the concepts we've introduced in the other videos. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do a few examples of is the complex exponential. And exponential form. Okay. So first of all, a quite simple one, how do you convert between the standard form of complex numbers and the exponential form? So write 3 plus 4i and let's do another one, um, minus 1 minus i in exponential form. Okay, so actually minus 1 minus i maybe I'll do first because that's the easiest. So Remember, the idea is that if you have a complex number here, this is a and this is b, and this is r and this is theta. That may be a bit small, sorry. And anyway, the relationship is a plus bi is equal to r e to the i theta. Okay, that's the relationship between the standard form and the exponential form. Okay, so here, if I do this one first, minus 1 minus i, so where's that? That's minus 1 is here, minus i is there, so my complex number is there, okay, so this length is 1, this length is 1, so here the length here is going to be r is the square root of 2, right, and what's the angle? Well, you can choose to measure the angle that way or this way, I'll choose to measure the angle this way, okay, so then this is, this is pi by 4, this is pi by 2, so the whole angle here is 3 pi by 4, with a minus. Okay, so I, I haven't mentioned this yet, but it's important. Um, if you're going this way around to measure angle, so in other words, you're going negative down here, then you the angle itself is countered with a minus sign. Okay, so here r is square root of 2, and theta is minus 3 pi by 4. Okay, so if I put these into the formula there, we get that minus 1 minus i is equal to square root of 2 e to the minus i 3 pi by 4. Okay, so that's the first one. Let's look at the second one. So 3 plus 4i. That's 3 units this way. 4 units this way. And that's that triangle there. Okay r and theta. So I chose this example so r would come out as something nice. right? Here r is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is square root of 9 plus 16, which is square root of 25, which is 5. Right? 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triangle. Okay, so r is 5. Theta does not come out to be anything nice in this case. Um, but you can express it in terms of the arc tangent or the arc cosine or whatever if you like. So for example, theta I can write as arc tan this divided by that, right? So it's arc tan 4 over 3. Or if you like, you could have written it as arc cos this divided by that, which is 5, so arc cos 3 fifths. Or if you like, you could have even written it as arc sine four fits. So the choice is yours, basically. Um, I'll choose arc tan, I suppose. So therefore we get that 3 plus 4i is equal to r, which is 5 times e to the i theta, which is e to the r arc tan 4 by 3. Okay, so in this case you can't write it in any neater form than that. Okay. So the other example you can ask you to do is to go the other way. So I could give you a number in, in exponential form and ask you to write it in the form a plus bi. Okay, so I'll do a couple of examples like that. So write e to the 1 plus i times pi and 1 plus i to the power 50 
in the form a plus b i. Okay. This is the second question. Okay, so I'll do this one first. So e to the 1 plus i pi. So this is e to the 1 times e to the i pi. Okay. So this is e times e to the i pi. So this is complex exponential form where r is equal to e and theta is equal to pi. Okay. Now if you draw, think about where this fits on the argon diagram then. Okay, so r is equal to e, that means the length is e. Theta is pi, so the angle here, theta is pi, that's 180 degrees. So that puts you down here. The length is e. E here. Right, so the, the solution, in other words, is just minus e. Okay. So therefore, in conclusion, um, e to the 1 plus i pi is just equal to minus e. If you don't like this diagrammatic way of doing it, by the way, another way you could have got the same answer is to use Euler's formula. e to the i pi is cos pi plus i sine pi. But cos pi is minus 1 and sine pi is 0, so this is just minus 1. So therefore, e times e to the i pi is just e times minus 1, which is minus e. So you get the same result. Okay. Okay, so the next one, 1 plus i to the power of 50. So you could just multiply this out 50 times. Obviously, that's the stupid way to do it because you'll take a long time. So here, it's much easier if you put it into a complex exponential form. Okay. So this is almost exactly the same as this example. So I'll just tell you the answer. In complex exponential form, 1 plus i is the square root of 2 times e to the i pi by 4, okay, to the power of 50. So then you can just bring the power of 50 inside here. So the square root of 2 is 2 to the half, so a half times 50 is 25, so 2 to the 25. And here I get e to the i 50 pi over 4, which is 25 pi over 2. So this is obviously r here. So what's this? 25 pi over 2. This is equal to 24 pi over 2 plus pi over 2, right? which is 12 pi plus pi over 2. But this is a multiple of 2 pi, so that doesn't change anything. So I can get rid of this. Right? So in other words, e to the i 25 pi over 2 is the same as e to the i pi by 2. And what's e to the i pi by 2? It has length 1 and it has angle pi by 2, which is 90 degrees. So in other words, it's equal to i. Okay, this is equal to i. Okay, again, if you don't like this diagrammatic way, you can put Euler's formula in here. Cos pi by 2 is 0, sine by pi by 2 is 1. Right, so that gives you the answer then. So this is 2 to the power 25, and this just turns out to be i. Okay, next up, um, what are we going to do? Okay, so next up I'll do another one using complex exponential, but it's, it's a slightly different kind of question against the question that's on the practice sheet. Um, so this is number three. Find all solutions of an equation z to the power of 4 equals minus 16. So we want to find all complex numbers z such that z to the power of 4 is minus 16. Okay, so the trick to these kind of problems is to write minus 16 in the complex exponential form. Okay, so to do that you have to again think about where it lies on the diagram. Okay, so minus 16 is over here, right? Minus 16 this way. So that means its length is 16 
and its angle 180 degrees is pi. Okay. So in other words, theta is equal to pi, r is equal to 16. So therefore, minus 16 is equal to 16 times e to the i pi. Okay. So the thing we want to solve is that z to the 4 is equal to 16 times e to the i pi. So now you can just take it to the power of a quarter. So z is equal to 16 to the power of a quarter times e to the i pi to the power of a quarter. So 16 to the quarter to the power of a quarter is 2. And here you can just multiply the powers. So this is e to the i pi by 4. Okay. So that's the answer in complex exponential form. If you want to write this out in um, the standard form, then you just use Euler's formula. So this is 2 cos pi by 4 plus i sine pi by 4. These are both 1 over square root of 2. So this is square root of 2 plus i times the square root of 2. Okay. So on the argon diagram, that will be the point here. Okay, square root of 2, square root of 2. Okay, however, that's one solution, but it's not the only solution. And the reason is, you see here, I could have done something slightly different. Instead of writing minus 1 as e to the i pi, I could also have written it as e to the minus i pi. Right? In other words, just change by 2 pi. I could also have written it as e to the i 3 pi, and I could also have written it as 16 times e to the minus i 3 pi. Okay, So these are all the same number here, but when I take them to the power of a quarter, I get different numbers. So here I would get, okay, let me stop a line here. So here I would get 2 times, this one would give me e to the minus i pi by 4. So the minus here means the angle is going the other way. So the second solution on the Eichmann diagram is down here. So I get another solution there. So I'll move away than that. So this is 2e to the i pi by 4 here. This is 2e to the minus i pi by 4 here. Okay, so I shouldn't say equals. These are now different solutions. Um, this one gives me 2e to the i 3 pi by 4. Okay, So 3 pi by 4 puts me over here. Okay. Same lengths, but just the angle is shifted by 90 degrees. Okay, So this is 2e to the i 3 pi by 4. And the final one is the same, just with minus 2e to the minus i 3 pi by 4. So that puts me down here. 2e to the i minus i 3 pi by 4. Okay. So you see there are four solutions. And this is generally true. If I have a power of z to the power of 4 here, there will be four solutions. If it's z to the 6, there will be six solutions. If it's z to the 3, there will be three solutions. Okay. So why are there only four solutions? Well, you can see that if I take another one here, so I can also write this as 16 times e to the i 5 pi, say. So when I take this one down here, I'll get another solution, which is 2 times e to the i 5 pi by 4. Okay. But here, this is the same as 2 times e to the i pi by 4. Right? Why is it the same? Because 5 pi by 4 is equal to 2 pi plus pi by 4. Right? And the 2 pi we've seen doesn't change the answer. So if I take another solution here, then that just repeats this one. So I just go around these four solutions. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. 
So these are the only solutions to this equation. Okay, um, so yeah, I should probably fill in the final stage here as well. So if you want to put these solutions in the standard form, then these would be square root of 2 minus i square root 2 um, minus square root of 2 plus i square root 2 and minus square root of 2 minus i square root of 2. In other words, you put them all together, plus or minus square root of 2 plus or minus i square root of 2. Right, just one final example and then our video is finished. So the final example I want to give you is an example of the um, the complex trigonometrical functions. Okay. Okay, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to do calculate um, sine of pi by 3 plus 2i. Okay, so this is sine of a general complex number, right? So remember here sine of z is equal to e to the i z minus e to the minus i z divided by 2i. So here z is equal to this. So this is e to the i pi by 3 plus 2i minus e to the minus i pi by 3 plus 2i divided by 2i, which here I get e to the i pi by 3, and this is times e to the minus 2 minus e to the minus i pi by 3. Um, times e to the 2 all over 2i. Okay, so you could put the answer like that, but let's put it in the standard form. So I use Euler's formula. This is e to the minus 2 cos pi by 3 plus i sine pi by 3 minus e to the 2 cos pi by 3 minus i sine pi by 3 and let's put the imaginary and real parts together and you should know sorry all divided by 2i so you should know that cos of pi by 3 is a half and sine of pi by 3 is root 3 over 2 so this is root 3 over 2 e to the minus 2 minus e to the 2 over 2i plus i times, so, sorry, cos of pi by 3 is a half, so that's a half, plus sine of pi by 3 is root 3 over 2, and I have e to the minus 2 plus e to the 2 over 2i. So this is the real part, right? So I get square root of 3 over 2 times e to the 2 plus e to the minus 2 over 2 and the imaginary part is this so this is a half times e to the 2 minus e to the minus 2 over 2 times i so here I've used the fact that 1 over i is equal to minus i that's another thing that's useful to remember 1 over i which I had here is equal to minus i which I put here Okay. okay, and then the reason I wrote it like this is you should recognize these are these hyperbolic functions I introduced. So this is root 3 over 2 times hyperbolic cosh of 2 plus a half times hyperbolic sine of 2 times i. Okay, and another example looking at the inverse sine function then. So find all solutions of sine z equals i. Okay, So this is using the arc sine function, right? Sine z equals i, that means that z is equal to arc sine of i. And we've seen that 
where we worked out the arcsine function. Arcsine of a complex number w was minus i times the complex log of, what was it? Let me just check. Here it is. Um, i times w plus or minus the square root of 1 minus w squared. Okay. So I just take this formula and put w equals i. So I get minus i complex log. So this is i times i is minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus i squared, which is minus 1. So this is minus i complex log of minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. Okay, so let's consider the plus and minus solutions separately. If I get plus, then I get minus i log c of square root of 2 minus 1. Okay. So this is minus i, and the way complex log is defined is the real log. And in this case, this is real, so I just have plus i 2n pi. Okay. So this is equal to 2n pi minus i log root 2 minus 1. Okay. And if I take the minus solution here, then I get minus i log c minus 1 minus root 2. So minus 1 minus root 2 is equal to 1 plus root 2 times minus 1, and minus 1 is e to the i pi, so here you get theta is equal to pi. So here you get minus i times log square root of 2 plus 1 plus i theta, which is i pi plus i 2n pi. So this gives you 2n plus 1 pi minus i log root 2 plus 1. Okay. So these are all the solutions. It's kind of interesting to plot what these solutions look like. Um, so all of these complex numbers here will have sine of this equals i. And if we plot what these look like, okay, so let's quickly work out what these logs are. Okay. Okay, so square root of 2 minus 1 log is minus 0.88. That's going to be down here, minus 0.88. Okay, and the other one is 1 plus root 2, so square root of, oops, square root of 2 plus 1 log is plus 0.88. Plus yes, there's an obvious reason why that's true. Okay, 0.88, okay. Um, and the solutions down here, ah, wait a minute, but this is, yeah, okay. So the solution, so this here is minus 0.88, but it's got a minus, so this is plus 0.88 here. And the 2n pi, so I get solution at 0, 2 pi, and 4 pi, and so on. So I'll get one solution when n is 0 there, then I get a solution when n is 1 here, solution when n is 2 there, n is minus 1 here, n is minus 2 there. So these are all solutions corresponding to this one. Okay. And then if I look at these, I get odd values of pi. So this is down here, then I'll get pi here, that's n equals 0, n equals 1 is this one, n equals minus 1 is the one here, and minus pi, so it's proportion that clashes there, and then a minus 3 pi 2. Okay, so it kind of zigzags like this. So these are all the solutions where if I take complex sine of this number, I will get i.
Okay, so this is about as difficult as it will get for this week's class, um, and that's the final example of this video.